this is a video on writing a piece of code in APL that will be reused often. It is for people relatively new to APL. It uh, really depends on what you're trying to achieve. Is it supposed to be a blazingly fast specialized utility, or will it just be a general covers all possibilities utility? Let's take an example. APL has a rotate function shown as this symbol here, a circle overstruck with a vertical bar. It is dyadic. It requires two arguments. Rotate will rotate a vector, a matrix, a n-dimensional array on any axis. It will do it from the front or from the back, like this. APL does not have a shift function. For example, it might be useful to have a function that shifts instead of rotating, left or right, by dropping the first n elements in padding with a prototype, as in shifting left or shifting right. Let's say we need a function to shift one number to the left. A solution would be like this. You catenate a zero, and then you drop from the left. Note that it is important to catenate the zero before dropping. If we did this instead, it wouldn't work for empty vectors. So we write S1. It works for empty vectors. There's no need for a left argument. This function is very limited in domain and only works sensibly on a numeric vector. If we need a more general function, one that would shift n places, we can get this one here. We catenate a certain number of zeros, and then we drop from the left. Obviously, S1 of V is faster than 1 S2 of V, but it is specialized and does less work. S2 is more general. Both would probably produce undesirable results with a string. Here we get a mixture of characters and numbers. We should probably prefer spaces to zeros in this case. S3 fixes that. It takes instead of padding. Speed-wise, S2 and S3 are pretty much equivalent, but they only work by shifting to the left. So we should modify S3 to take from either direction by using the sign of N to take, like this. This will slow it down a bit, but it has the advantage of working both ways. An important disadvantage is that it doesn't work with zero. Let's fix that. The sign of zero is zero, and we're taking zero elements. That's the problem we have here. It really should be a one, or even minus one, when n is zero. So let's edit S4. And now it works. That's better. Is it enough? Do we need a function that would work for higher rank arrays, as in this? Note that we're shifting up instead of left. We're shifting on the first dimension. If that's what we need, we need to modify S4 like this. On the first line, we make sure that we have shift numbers for each dimension. On line 2, we compute the sign and adjust the zeros properly, as in S4. And on line 3, we perform the actual drop and take. Note that we only need to specify the leading axis shift values. We now have a generalized utility to shift any array in any direction, in any dimension. This should work with any known APL. If your APL supports dynamic function, you could also use... Or we could use strains if they are available. If you are interested in the trained version of these functions, see this link, and the same functions will be shown as strain examples. This was only a brief look at writing utilities in general. The key idea here is that the more general your code is, the more costly it is likely to be. You have to decide for yourself how much time and effort is worth the problem. Maybe a series of specialized utilities is in what you need. Happy coding!